Christian comedy has a everyone, I'm your host Sam Beeman and you're watching Light Talk. Now on today's episode I've got some exciting guests and without further ado I'd like to go ahead and bring on my first guest. Please welcome Julius Fletcher. Julius! Hey man! I am so glad that you are on the show. Me too! <laughs> you know I I saw your uh, your audition video mm -hmm. and I could not help but laugh. I mean you've got you got so many different things that were going on, and if I remember correctly, you were the first person, I believe, to send in your audition video. The first one. What were you thinking when when you saw the audition information for Light Talk? You know, I mean, what what went through your mind? When I saw it, I was saying, "This is interesting. <laughs> Let's try this. I never tried <laughs> being on TV or on." what I call the ICTV, International Cybernetic <laughs> Television. So I was like, let me try this. And I was at a friend's house recording. And I was like, do you have capability to record? And so he said, yeah, my phone. I was like, ooh, let's do this now. Oh, you did that on a phone? It was off a cell phone. <laughs> That's how I did that. Nice, nice. And now, is that your friend that we see in the background? Like, because I remember... I remember watching this, and then you're like, you're singing or something, and all of a sudden I see somebody like in the background. Yes, that was, like, oh. that was him. That was him. That was him. That was him. Oh, man. That, that was a trip. And I've had other friends that said, said what was that in the background? It, it was him. Uh. It was. <laughs> Did you guys talk about it afterwards? Like, like man, you walked into the shot. And... I wasn't even paying attention to that much. I was like, let's just upload it. We're not going to get any better than this, so let's just do it now. And I think that was only just one take. Oh, good. Yeah, so. And and you've had uh, well, you've had other friends or family members, they they commented on it, or they know you like, oh, Julius, you know, you do crazy stuff, and, you know, we, what? I don't think with that particular video a lot of people <laughs> saw that. <laughs> <laughs> it's hidden. It's hidden far deep right. in the light they, talk fan page. They, they don't know that one unless they follow me real closely on Facebook. Uh -huh. A lot of them don't. So, <laughs> and, and you even wrote a song about this whole Facebook phenomenon. Yes! Yes! I did! T tell us a little bit about this. Uh, I mean, you know, I first heard this, you know, you performed it at a theater mm -hmm. and people were just laughing hysterically. <laughs> uh, can you give us a little taste of that? I mean, this, what is this about? Okay, with... The Facebook song, um, it's called Not A Number, and I think everybody can relate. When you add people as your friends, then somehow or another, another they just become a number to you. And just one mm -hmm. of those numbers yeah. <laughs> on the fa Facebook. So it actually came from when I was doing a show, Scott's Royal Boys, and one of the guys added me, and I said on their wall, I don't want to be just a number to you. And so from that... <laughs> It evolved into the song, so I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be a, what's it? <laughs> okay, we're doing it. Uh-oh. Okay, we're doing it. <laughs> I don't want to be a number to you. <laughs> I don't want to be a number to you. I don't want to be a number to you. I want you to know my name. <laughs> you just added me on Facebook. Yes, you did. There I go, right there. I thought I was gonna turn things around in your life. But ever since you added me, you don't say anything to me. So I always leave you message after message, waffles after waffles. Get that chat box, no response. <laughs> that's just a piece of. Yeah, that's just that's just a small smidgen. <laughs> yeah, and be and be on the lookout because the music video for that is coming out. So. Oh, 
Wow. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm so so big on. things are on the horizon here. Yes, we're working on the CD to put it on. So CD, video. Yeah, we're working on that as we, I'm working on it. So we're working on it. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I also hear that you're going to have like a Twitter account, follow uh, Julius. Yeah, so. okay. The Twitter is going to be called Follow Julius. And, um... It's going to be connected to the online show that I have called Only Julius, which is on YouTube and on Facebook. And um, it is going to be connected to all of that. So funny story with Follow Julius, I was doing an African dance class. And that day I lost my voice. Oh, man. Of all days. <laughs> and I had to write out movements, what we're going to do. Somebody was keeping the beat. And the assistant was saying the movement, and then at some point she went, five, six, ho, oh, just follow Julius. <laughs> so that was the inspiration there? That was how it happened. Then oh, that was man. like, you need to actually do a Twitter page and call it Follow Julius. I'm like, hey, well, that works. works. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, it's been a lot of fun with Julius, but we, uh, we're going to have you stick around because we got a song. We got something to do. That you're gonna be doing coming up here in just a moment. Yeah. Now you got. You got. I don't want to be a number to you, but we yeah, got something peace. coming up after the break. Yeah. And uh, tell them real quick how they can get a hold of you again. I mean, we, Facebook, Twitter. Okay, or... we have Facebook, which you can do the only Julius, or you can add me on my Facebook page, which is Julius Fletcher. You can go to my website, JuliusFletcher.art.OfficeLive.com. So you can find many ways of trying to find me. So that's one of the ways. Awesome. Make sure that you go ahead and make Julius more than a number. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> be, be his friend. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Julius, and I can't okay. wait to see what you got. Okay. All right. See you after the break. More fun than finding out that you're driving in the wrong direction on a one-way street. You're all watching Life Talk with Sam Beeman. <laughs> Light talk. I'm singing to you on light talk. The light is shining on me on light talk. What are we gonna talk about? I don't know. Cause the light is shining on me on light talk. Light talk. Light talk. Light talk. Light talk. You had a heavy dinner. I'm just a dessert because I'm on light talk. Singing on light talk. Now for those that love Thanksgiving and you had that uh, heavy dinner, I want to sing this for you. We got that. We got that. We got that. We got that tat 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 gobble gobble eat. We got that 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 turkey and ham because my name ain't Sam. We got that gobble gobble eat because it's that all oh, snap. We got that mac and cheese. We call it greens and peas. We ain't got no chicken today because it's that turkey day. We got that gobble gobble eat. 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 Cornucopia in front of us because my name ain't Gus with apple grapes and pears. We're gonna sit in our chair and remove our ties and eat that sweet potato apple pie. Gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble gobble eat. So let us sit at the table because God is able. So that's all I can say. So let's enjoy this day. We got that gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble gobble eat. We got that gobble. And now it's time for Common Sense Tips with Keith Smith. Oh, uh, hi there. I'm Keith Smith and you're watching Common Sense Tip with Keith Smith. Now on today's Common Sense Tip, boy, I say that three times fast, I'm going to tell you something. You always need to make sure you have an extra set of these 
because you never know when something might happen. Let's say you're, I don't know, you're shaving and one of these suckers goes down the drain and you can't grab it quick enough and then all of a sudden you have to go to a company meeting looking like this. Or a first date, on my case. <laughs> Anyways, that's all the time that I have. Looks like I need to go take a cold shower. Oh, yeah. If you don't like what you see, that's okay. Close your eyes, but leave your ears open. You're watching Light Talk with Sam Beeman. All right, I'm Sam Beeman. You're watching Light Talk. That was a lot of fun with Julius Fletcher. And now I'd like to introduce you to a good friend of mine who is a very funny stand-up comic. Please welcome Claiborne Cox. Hey, Claiborne. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes. Hey, guys, settle down. Settle down out there. I mean, really. All right, man, it is so, I can't believe that you're on the show. I mean, well, you know, we've done shows together, but, yeah. you know, not like Light like Talk, so. Right. Man, it's so good to have you in the studio. So, uh, how did you get into comedy, man? Um, well, I, I used to tell a, a story of the day to my class. I'm a high school teacher uh, by day, a comedian by night. And I would tell a, a story of the day, and it would usually be a funny story. And the kids seemed to enjoy that more than they enjoyed my teaching for the of course the yeah. and, I want to hear a story <laughs> so right the, you know, no joke so I, I watched a TV show called Bananas and um, there were some Christian comedians and I thought you know what I, I think I would like to try that and so I uh, um, contacted a, a guy named Gordon Douglas um, and uh, he just kind of mentored me and kind of walked me through and uh, uh, there's been a persona to come about and uh, that just one thing led to another and it's been two years now just trying to be a comedian. <laughs> and of course, this just adds so much fun to the classroom now. You know, I wonder what your students are thinking. You know, I got a stand up comic for my class. <laughs> so that, well, maybe. I don't, I don't think I want to know if it's too You don't want to know what they right. think, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, well, you know, I mean, even at the, uh, the event that we had done earlier this summer, you know, with uh, a lot of the students that were out there, man, they were having a great time. They right. seem to just love you. Well, they're, they're good kids. I enjoy them. Hello to all of you who are. Watching the show. They're, they're fine. They're fine. Oh, that's good. Um, now, one of the things I think we, you know, some of the watch, uh, the watchers, the watchers, some of the viewers out there, boy, talk about correct English. Some of the uh, people out there watching right now are probably going, now, wait a minute, Cleveland seems a little bit different than what I'm used to on stage. You know, uh, what is, what, what's going on? I mean, what, what happened? Uh, okay, so here's the thing, Sam. I'm going to level with you. Um, I, I'm an easy person to pick on, and um, I've got so many cousins, they used to pick on me all the time. My, the, the other school teachers used to pick on me a lot. And so, uh, persona, I didn't set out looking for this persona, <laughs> but it just developed. When, when people would pick on me, I would revert to acting in a bizarre little way, and I would have tics and go, mmm, and things like that. <laughs> so it was a defense mechanism? It was a defense mechanism. It was my way of coping with all these people messing with me, okay. you know? And they they loved it more than they, they or at least they thought it was funnier than, of course, I am as a real person. Yeah. So as a school teacher, to keep this, the students' attention, I thought, well, I need to, to utilize this and maximize. And so instead of being clay cox i i'm claiborne cox i act like this this crazy um <laughs> weird guy and the students are, are mesmerized by that guy oh, more wow. so than they am by, by me so okay. <laughs> he's funnier than i am and this is what transpires this uh this is what you do on stage is uh, right. part mm -hmm. of the stand-up comedy and everything because i know that you know some of the people that have watched you on stage are like you know wow is he <laughs> is he always like that you know and then they meet you off stage and you're like it's a little bit different. So right. it's kind of like an amplified version uh, of this. It is it's a caricature okay. of, it's of yourself. Of myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not trying to uh, duplicate, you know, another or person. So I'm sure there have been influences, you know, who right. who've led to this character or whatever. But um, it's just it's a caricature of who I am when I'm under pressure, and it, I just am only that guy on stage. So. Well, you know what? We've actually got some footage of you on stage as this character, so let's go ahead and uh, roll that clip. We'll be back in just a moment. Black Talk presents Stand Up For Jesus, and now here's your feature comedian, Graver Cox. Mm, I like butter on my pancakes. It's not a joke, man. I cannot afford to buy name brand butter. 
I cannot even afford to buy a regular generic butter. I have to buy a generic generic butter. It's called I can't believe I can't afford it. I can't believe it's not butter. I cannot afford to buy a main brand hand sanitizer. I have to buy a generic hand sanitizer. It's called, it's called soapy water. about germs, but it kills 99.9% .9 of dirt. <laughs> Our yard is all dirt. We cannot afford grass or sod. My mom told me that I was saying the grass is always on the other side. <laughs> you remember those old commercials for sure deodorant? Raise your hand if you're sure. My mom used to buy me perhaps deodorant. <laughs> Your slogan was, perhaps you should keep your arms down. <laughs> Are you clapping about that? <laughs> My mom went a shopping spree from a grocery store. They said she had two minutes to run around and grab everything she could for free. And she went straight for the cash register. <laughs> a joke, man. <laughs> Maybe you have misconceptions about insurance and think that it's only for old people. No, I'm here to clear up your preconceptions about insurance. Preconception number one, if I drink insurance, everyone will make fun of me. Fact, nope, only young and middle-aged people will make fun of me. <laughs> Preconception number two, if I drink insurance, it will give me wrinkles. Fact, nope. Mm. It, it'll give you gas. <laughs> Preconception number three, it sure has a horrible aftertaste. Fact. Preconception number four, <laughs> it sure tastes like boogers. Fact. How do you know what boogers taste like? Because that man was nodding his head right there. <laughs> Before I got married, I had to share my bathroom with a college roommate. One time, that boy, when I was gone, he cut out a little cartoon muscle arms and he taped them to his toothbrush. He laid my toothbrush out flat, so it looked like his toothbrush had beat up my toothbrush. <laughs> well, no, you don't. <laughs> so when he was gone, I stopped up two inches of water in the sink and I put his toothbrush face down on the water. So it looked like my toothbrush had drowned his toothbrush. <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, he did not appreciate that, so when I was gone, he got some dental floss, and he tied it around the neck of my toothbrush. He hung my toothbrush. Mm-mm. <laughs> so when he was gone, I got a sharp kitchen utensil and gave it to my toothbrush, and I laid his toothbrush in a pool of ketchup, so it looked like my toothbrush had stabbed his toothbrush. And so then, whenever I was gone, he got my toothbrush and he stuck it up his nose and did like this right here. Yes, he did. And so then, when I got home, yeah, I started to brush my teeth. And that's, oh, this thing's like insure. <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm, well, so one of us had to be the bigger man. Not me, I set his toothbrush on fire. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, every time I see this material, I, you know, and I've worked with Clay a number of shows, and every time, it's always, uh, I don't know, you, you're just so much, uh, so much fun, and it's great to just see the audiences, how they respond to it, and I don't care how many times I've seen it, I laugh at the same, uh, the same jokes, um, you know, especially the toothbrush story, which was the first, right. the first thing I heard you do right. in Nashville. Yeah. And I was like, man, this guy is awesome. I mean, it was just so much fun. And how did that toothbrush story originate anyways? That, that's actually mostly true. There are a, a couple portions of that we've, uh, you know, ad-libbed and spiced up just because it's comedy, you know. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of 
punching up in there. But for the most, most part, I had an actual roommate right after college, and he, um, I think I started it. And the story, what I tell on stage, I made it so that he's the bad guy. He okay. started it. But in real life, I think I started because I bought, here's what happened. Oh. I remember. Okay, here's how good, here's the real story. Okay, here so, it is. I don't know if I've ever really told no. you the real story. So, you know, as many times we've done shows. This yeah, is the first time this I'm is here. true. You've heard this story a lot, but you've never yes. heard the real. Okay, so here's the thing. He had a ratty, tatty, namby pam toothbrush. That's true. <laughs> we did share a toothbrush holder, you know. But I bought at Walmart one night. I was perusing. I was a young single guy. I had I had a fair amount of money, and so I decided to put, you know, a fair amount to this nice toothbrush. Yeah. And so I got it, and I took it back. It was a nice beefy. It looked like a muscular toothbrush. It was rounded and curved. You know, his was straight. It's a man's toothbrush, so, that's boy. That's right. It was. It was. <laughs> so. Uh, he had his little nanny coming toothbrush. I, I put mine in. It was hard to even fit it in the holster because it was so. Yeah. Thick. That's I right. see you shaking your head, Sam. I'm yeah. right here. So, <laughs> okay, so um, I wrote on a sticky note. I was a school teacher. It was my first year of teaching school ever. Um, this is probably, I don't know, maybe eight years ago now. I wrote, My toothbrush is vastly superior to your toothbrush. <laughs> and I stuck it up on the bathroom mirror. And so he came in and he was. What, <laughs> yeah, what, what is, is this coming from? And so then he. Uh, he did something of mine. I, maybe that's when he hung it or something. And the story that I tell on stage is, is usually is the same, but it's different than the true thing. I, I just wrote a, a thing to insult his toothbrush. <laughs> then he messed with mine. And then, I, you know, on stage I mix up who did what. And yeah. Like that, so. Oh, man, that is awesome. See, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. Let me just shout out to Nathan Robinson. He, <laughs> he's the, the, there is an actual other toothbrush guy. And so, like, he's oh. almost borderline. Um, you know, not famous because I'm not famous, but like when I say, "Hey, this is the toothbrush guy," they're like, "Oh, that's you're the yeah. guy." Because they're always like, "So it's yeah, me. hello, Nathan." Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, the last time uh, I met up with him and you introduced me, like, yeah, this is my old roommate. He's the toothbrush guy. I was like, "Right, this yeah. is the guy." Yeah, the guy. <laughs> there's actually parts of that toothbrush story that I don't do on the stage because they're. I'll, maybe I'll tell you later. Ah. There's a, there's more. Watch out for your. Yeah, well, yeah. Watch out. There's there's gonna be more. Uh, well, tell the, everybody out there how they can get in touch with you, uh, you know, booking, whatever, you know, like, man, this guy, clever, and he is so funny. I want to book him. I want him to do the toothbrush story right. at my church or my event. How can they get a hold of him? Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, you could go to my website, which is www claibornecoxcomedy.com and um, a lot of people misspell it. It's not Claiborne. It's, <laughs> um, it's, it's not two words. It's, it's my actual, my middle name. My real middle name is C-L-A-Y-B-U-R-N coxcomedy.com or um, you can email me at uh, claibornecoxcomedy at gmail.com um, and actually on the website, this is not a joke, this is serious. Uh, if you have questions about eternity, if you um, would like to know what Christianity is all about, if you um, have any um, any doubt as to whether you're going to go to heaven, on my website you can go to the About Me section. Um, there's a link there that I, I didn't make this up. This is a gospel presentation by a well-known pe preacher, okay. but there's a link there where you can read the plan of salvation and find out what it takes for, for a person to go to heaven. And so, Well, there you have it. Great. Awesome. Clavern, it is so good to have you, you sir. in the studio on here. Light Talk. And, uh, well, that's all that we have. All the time. All that we have. What do we have here, anyways? That's all the time that we have in this edition of Light Talk. So take care and God bless. You've been watching Light Talk with Sam Beeman. Clay, hey. what, what, you're still here. I mean, we've already finished the show. It, yeah. What's going on? No, I'm not snooping or anything. I was my wife and baby are out there, and I just thought I would wait for them to come and get me. Okay, your baby? Yeah. Cassidy? Yeah. Hey, I got a song what? I could teach you. If oh. That's all right. Yeah, I, to mm, teach to her. No, I don't really. Play. Oh, okay. It's it's fun. It's fun. It's it's a great little rhyme. You know, it's kids. You know, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. The swallowed the fly, and it got down inside of her. And all of a sudden, there was this that's, buzzing. Whoa, whoa! I don't think that's how. I don't think this is a real song. Did she? Did she swallow the fly on purpose, or it was it an unintentional kind of thing? She might have just opened her mouth and... All right. Well, I guess that's... Kind of like when you're driving down the road, got the windows down, and you're like, Hey! Oh! Yeah. All right. Well, I don't really appreciate... Uh, well, just whatever. Okay. What about this? There was an old lady who swallowed a spider. She swallowed a spider. It fell down inside her and tickled oh, and... Did you, all right. Stop it, Sam. The, I don't... Why didn't... Is, is this on... Does this... 
Why did she swallow the spider? Because I can understand swallowing a fly unintentionally, but oh, was this on the same day? Why? I don't think that maybe she should have swallowed a Venus flytrap because that's what would get a fly. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Or uh, maybe just a fly swatter, and then she could stretch her esophagus and it could just kill the fly in her, just, in her stomach. Okay, what about this? There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. She swallowed a bird. How absurd. How it's absurd. Really ab it? It's not absurd to eat a bird, Sam. It's chicken. It's good protein. I just think that there's nothing. I think that it's wrong. I think you shouldn't have said that, really. Well, it's just part of the song. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't write the lyrics. It's, you know, it's, it's a popular kid's little rhyme, you know. That... Hmm. What about this? There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. She swallowed a cat. How about that? She swallowed how, the cat. And then what do you mean, how about that? She swallowed a cat. What kind of children's song is this, Sam? I'm just trying to get rid of some of the, the strays. I, get. I don't. I'm not going to teach it to my kid. I can tell you that. Just swallowing a cat. This, this is domestic pet, Sam. I'm not going to sing about it. I think that's absurd. <laughs> okay. If, okay. Eating a bird's not absurd. Eating a cat, that's absurd. That's probably illegal, Sam. Well, here's something that might not be illegal. There was an old lady who swallowed a dog. She swallowed that's, a dog. What Sam, a hog. That's, more, that's illegaler than swallowing a cat is. It sounds... What a hog. You got that right, I can tell you. But if if Peter knew about this, it sounds like she needs to swallow some gas. <laughs> Money didn't swallow some Drano, <laughs> but this is not, it's not a pro, it's not funny, Sam. It's okay, like, okay, 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 well, oh, all right, all right. There was an old lady who swallowed a cow, she swallowed a cow. How about now? Wow, what a cow! Was, <laughs> Wait, was, was, cow. There was the purpose to eat the dog? Is that what it is? What, why would she swallow a cow? Because she swallowed a, a dog to eat the cat and the cat to eat the bird cows don't eat dogs Sam they don't they don't they don't eat so why would you sing about that then you know I, I would like to track down the writers of this song to find out it sounds like she is a cow how much does this lady weigh well we, we haven't established that yet but I'm sure that <laughs> when you find out that there was an old lady who swallowed a horse she swallowed a horse isn't that great of course no, then all of a sudden no. there was a... to eat a cow horses don't eat cows Sam people eat cows Steak? Mm. Beef? Where's the beef? Oh, the lady ate it. Hmm. Where's the horse? I don't know. She probably ate that, too. It sounds wicked, I think, personally. Man, I just hate that song. Let's sing it again. Why? The show's over!